Hi guys, my name is Emily. Today I'm going to be filming the first part of my November wrap-up. I've just read so many things now that I feel like if I don't talk about them, I'm going to forget about them. So be sure to leave me a comment down below letting me know your favorite read in November. And without further ado, let's get into the books. The first thing I read in the first half of November was The Land of Stories by Chris Coffer. He's written this series of books in which he's playing with fairy tales. So the first book follows Alex and Connor, who are twins. Their father has recently died and they've had to move into a crappy little rental house with their mother. And they're very sad, their lives have changed a lot. Their mother is barely home and so on their birthday, it turns out she has to work a shift. Their grandmother shows up as a surprise to spend their birthday with them. And when she leaves, she leaves with them this book of fairy tales. Alex takes this book and starts sort of losing herself in it. She starts to spend a lot of time in her bedroom all by herself. And Connor confronts her one day while she's playing with this book. They discover you can sort of drop things into the book and they disappear. Kind of like Tom Riddle's diary in Harry Potter, except that as they discover, you can actually fall into another world through the book. It's about their adventures in Fairyland. It has a lot of potential. There are a lot of interesting ideas, but some of the writing was really awkward. Like there were some really, really awkward similes that I just, they were so cringy, they took me out of the flow of the story. There was also the fact that, and I've heard that this improves, um, it was very much like a do the thing, do the thing, do the thing, do the thing, rapid fire quest. But it was a fast read and as a debut novel, I think it was a good thing. I know working in the bookstore, a lot of young people, a lot of little kids are reading this. So it is in the nine to 12 age bracket and you get a lot of parents coming in for it, talking about how much their kids love it. Based on the first taste of The Wishing Spell, I'm not super inclined to pick up the second in the series, but we'll see. So the next book I read in November was Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. Now, from what I'd watched online in terms of spoiler-free reviews, I was told that this was a really cute story. It's about a budding friendship and romance between Eleanor and Park. So two people who just sort of meet and develop a friendship and romance based on their love of nerdy stuff and music. What most of the reviews that I watched managed to leave out was Eleanor's incredibly abusive and troubling home situation which I feel like I wish I'd been prepared for because I took it home and I was like, I'm ready for a cute thing. And then I got this devastating story. I mean, I loved it, but I'd wish I'd been emotionally prepared for it. If you haven't read it, I would highly recommend that you do check it out, but be prepared. It is not as cute as people will tell you. Third thing I read was The Secret Path. The Secret Path is a nice companion novel to Joseph Boyden's Wenjack. It is also exploring the story of Cheney Wenjack, who was a young boy who ran away from the residential school system and then passed away while trying to find his way home. His story sort of began the first investigations into the residential school system. Secret Path is a graphic novel, super beautiful and sort of unique. I haven't read a lot of graphic novels, but most of them seem to be more comic book style. This let you do a lot of the storytelling. So it would give you a poem and then over the next couple pages would give you images without text. With the poem in mind, you are sort of visually building the narrative for yourself. And it was beautiful. I thought the use of color and lack of color throughout the piece was really interesting. It was fantastic. So definitely do check out The Secret Path. The next thing I read, I also borrowed from work and that was We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. This is another YA contemporary novel in which we are told the story of four very privileged young people who have spent every summer together on a private island owned by their grandfather. So Cadence is telling a story and she has experienced some sort of trauma that has caused her to experience some sort of temporary amnesia. So she tells the story and struggles with the sort of lack of context. We're in the same boat, we lack all of that context as well. It's definitely a fun read. And if you're looking for something with a little bit of mystery, something fast paced, I would recommend that you check it out. So the next thing that I borrowed from work is Amulet Book One, The Story Keeper. This is a graphic novel series marketed to readers ages nine to 12. The illustrations are 
beautiful and I'm gonna scooch over because I want to put up some pictures on the screen that I took from the book. So this tells the story of Emily and Nevin, like the land of stories. Their father has recently died, so their mother, in her like grieving process, wants to get away from the life that they know, and so they move to this new house that doesn't have a lot of memories attached to it to sort of grieve and regroup. And the problem is the house is kind of haunted by these otherworldly creatures, and they end up going through a portal into another world, and their mother is kidnapped, and so Emily and Nevin are on this journey to get their mother back. It was a lot of fun. It was incredibly beautiful. Not gonna lie, I was not prepared to be as emotionally invested in this as I was. So the next thing that I read was Empire of Storms, a Throne of Glass novel by Sarah J Maas. This is the latest addition to the story. So much time is now spent with the side characters and that is what's driving my interest in the story, is seeing what happens to these other characters. If you take out all the sex scenes between our whole cast of characters, it's very weak in terms of plot itself. It is a lot of character development, I guess. If that's what you're invested in the series for, then that is great. I'm not so much interested in the romantic relationships as I am interested in the development of some of these really cool side characters. So I didn't super love the romance scenes, but what this book did bring up for me and has inspired some research for a future video discussion series is Sex in YA. Now, as a person who feels very strongly that children should not be censored in their reading, I have absolutely no problem in the sort of surprisingly graphic sex. I don't think I've ever seen the word cock in YA before, and this has the word cock in it. If that gives you any idea to the, the level of description in the sex scenes that we see in this book. I don't have a problem with young people reading that. The problem is that now as a bookseller who is on the sales floor, who gets to speak to parents who come in with their young person and they're going, we're looking for a book that does X but has no sex in it. And they're asking you about the level of sex in the book and whether or not the material is appropriate for their aged young person. I'm at this sort of awkward cross point. I'm very conflicted and it has sparked a lot of research in terms of young people and sex and psychology. And so I'm planning on putting together a video series talking about this in the future just because I now have an interest in it. If you're a reader of YA and you can think of of books in the YA category that don't have sex in them, please leave me your recommendations so I can find these and read these and I guess recommend them against my own moral compass. And the final thing that I have read in the first half of November is the script for Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by JK Rowling. This came out on November 18th, the same day as the film. I picked it up on the 18th, I finished it on the 18th, and to be honest, I had no expectations going into this after Cursed Child, which, I mean, my one friend watched the video and described it as like me bearing my raw soul to the internet. Like you could clearly tell that I was upset about the play. I had absolutely low, low expectations going into this. And I was pleasantly surprised. I'm actually gonna film a video about Fantastic Beasts, just talking about my experience with Fantastic Beasts and some of the questions that it raised for me. This is the end of part one of my November wrap up. Do let me know in the comments below what your favorite book in November was. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you with part two very soon. Bye.